evening, my little angel. The camping atmosphere at Tomoe School reminds me of when I was your age. The feeling of getting in and out of a small space made of fabric is what's cozy and comfortable, but still exciting, isn't it? That wonderful feeling I still do not forget so far. For the same reason, camping has never ceased to be a favorite in the other world. Camping, in addition to enjoying staying in the tent, we are also closer and more connected with nature. And summer games in the camping trips too. What games have you played and liked? About Toto Chan, what game did she play with her friends in the summertime? Let us find out in the following two chapters the bravery test and the rehearsal hall. What's oh, scary, smells bad, and tastes good. They like this riddle so much that even though they knew the answer, Toto Chan and her friends never tired of saying to one another, Ask me the riddle about what's scary and smells bad. The answer was a demon in a toilet eating a bin chen bun. The way the Tomoe bravery test ended could have made a good reader too. What's scary, it cheese, and makes you laugh. The night they set up tents in the assembly hall and went camping, the headmaster announced, We're going to hold a bravery test one night at Kuhanbasu Temple. Hands up if you want to be a ghost. About seven boys vied for the privilege. When the children assembled at the school on the appointment evening, the boys who were going to be ghosts brought costumes they had made themselves and went off to hide in the temple grounds. We scare you to death, they said as they left. The remaining 30 or so children divided themselves into small groups of about five and set off for Gehen Basu at Stucker Intervals. They were supposed to walk around the temple grounds and the graveyard and then return to the school. The headmaster explained that although this was a test to see how brave they were, it could be perfectly alright if anybody wanted to return without finishing the curse. Toto Chan had brought a flashlight she has borrowed from mother. Don't lose it, mother has said. Some of the boys said they were going to catch the ghost and brought butterfly nests, while others got string, saying they were going to tie them up. It was dark when the headmaster explained what they were to do, and groups had been formed by playing rock, paper, scissors. Squealing with excitement, the first group set off out of the school gate. Finally, it was time for Toto Chan's group to go. The headmaster said, no ghosts could appear before they got to Kuhan Basu Temple, but the children were not too sure about that and proceeded nervously until they reached to the entrance of the temple, from where they could see the guardian deva kings. The temple grounds seemed pitch dark in spite of the moon being out. It was pleasant and spacious there by day, but now, not know they could encounter one of the ghosts, the children were so terrified they could hardly bear it. <coughs> Someone could scream as a tree rustle in the breeze, or here a ghost, as someone legs touch something soft. In the end, it seemed as if even the friend whose hand one has holding might be a ghost. Toto Chan made up her mind not to go all the way to the graveyard. That's where the ghosts were about to be waiting. And anyway, she felt she now knew all about bravery tests and could go back. The others in our group made the same decision at the same time. It was rest assuring not to be the only one. And they all ran back as fast as their legs could carry them. And when they got to the school, they found the groups that had left before them already there. It seemed that almost everybody has been too scared to go as far as the graveyard. Just then, a boy with a white cloth over his head came through the gate crying, accompanied by a teacher. 
he was one of the ghosts and had been crouching in the graveyard the whole time but nobody had come and then he got more and more scared and finally went outside and was found crying in the road by the pressuring teacher who brought him back while they were all trying to cheer the boy up a second ghost came back crying with another boy who was also crying The one who was the good has also been hiding in the graveyard and when he heard someone running toward it, he left out to try and scare him and they collided it head on. Hurt and frightened to death, the two of them came running back together. It was so funny and with the great relief that they came after being so scared, the children laughed their heads off. The ghost laughed and cried at the same time. Soon, one of the Chan's classmates, whose name was Mikita, arrived back. He was wearing a ghost hood made of newspaper and was furious because nobody had come into the graveyard. I've been waiting there all the time, he complained, scratching the mosquito bites on his arms and legs. A ghost been beaten by mosquitoes, someone said, and everyone began laughing again. Well. I better go and bring back the rest of the ghosts, said teacher Maruyama. The first grade homeroom teacher set off. He rounded up ghosts he found standing bewildered under the street lights and ghosts who had been so frightened they had been gone home. He brought them all back to the school. After that night, Tomoe's students weren't frightened of ghosts anymore. For, after all, Even ghosts themselves get terrified, don't they? That day, Toto-chan walked suddenly. Rookie walked calmly too, looking up at Toto-chan occasionally. That could only mean one thing, they were on their way to begin at daddy's rehearsal hall. Normally, Toto-chan could be running as fast as she could, walking this way and looking for something one might have dropped or going across other people's gardens, one after the other, ducking under their fences. Daddy's rehearsal hall was about a five minutes walk from the house. He was the concertmaster of an orchestra, and being a concertmaster meant he played the violin. Once, when she was taken to the concert, what had intrigued Tutu Chan was that after people had all finished clapping, The whispering conductor turned toward the audience, got down from his podium, and shook hands with Daddy, who had been playing the violin. Daddy stood up, and the rest of the orchestra stood up too. Why did they shake hands? Tutu Chan has whispered. The conductor wants to thank the orchestra of having played so well. So. He shook hands with Daddy as the representative of the orchestra as a way of saying thank you, explained Mother. Toto Chan liked going to the rehearsal hall because, unlike school where there were primarily children, they were all grown ups and played various instruments. Besides, the conductor, Sir Rosenstock, spoke such funny Japanese. Sir Joseph Rosenstock, Daddy had told her, was a very famous conductor in Europe. Still, a man called Hitler was starting to do terrible things there, so Sir Rosenstock had to escape and come to Japan to continue to make music. Daddy said he greatly admired Sir Rosenstock. Toto Chan didn't understand the worst situation, but at that time, Hitler had started persecuting Jews. If it hadn't been for that, Sir Rosenstock would never have come to Japan, and the orchestra that composer Yamada Kusuke had founded would probably never have made such progress in a short time it did through the effort of the conductor of international standing. Sir Rosenstock demanded of the orchestra the same level of performance he could have expected from the first-class orchestra in Europe, That's why Sir Rosenstock always grab at the end of rehearsals. I try so hard, and you don't respond. Mr. Hideo Saito, the cellist who used to conduct while Sir Rosenstock was resting, spoke the best German and could reply for them all. We are doing the best we can. Our technique is not good enough. I assure you our fellow is not deliberate. 
the intricacies of the situation escape her. But sometimes Sarah Sensa could get so red in the face, it seemed as if steam could be coming out of his head and he began shouting in German. At times like that, Toto Chan would retire from her favorite window where she had been watching chin in hands and would crouch on the ground with Rocky, hardly daring to breathe and wait the music begin again. But usually, Sarah Sensa was friendly and his Japanese was quite amusing. Very good, Kuro Yanagi Sen. He would say with a funny accent when they had played well or wonderful. Toto Chan had never been inside a rehearsal hall. She liked to peek in the window and listen to the music. So when they stopped for a break and the musicians came outside to smoke, Daddy often found her there. Oh, there you are, Tosuke. He could say, if Sir Rosenstock spotted her, he say, Hey, good morning, or good day, little girl, in his funny accent. And although she was big now, he would pick her up as he did when she was little and put his cheek against hers. It embarrassed her a bit, but she liked Sir Rosenstock. He wore a glasses with thin silver rims and had a large nose and was not very tall. But he had a delicate, handsome face that you could immediately recognize as an artist. Toto Chan liked the rehearsal hall. It was rather western in style and a bit dilapidated. The wind that blew from Senzaku Point carried the sound of the music far beyond the rehearsal hall. Sometimes the call of the goldfish vendor would blend with the theme. Kingyo, e Kingyo. The goldfish is King Gyo in Japanese. Tonight's story time is over. What did you like the most out of what you just heard? We'll talk about it in the following time. I kiss you long on your forehead. Stay warm and sleep well, my little love. See you again next time.